Good morning. Hope you're having a happy and safe Labor Day, enjoying uh, your time. Beautiful weekend, my goodness. Uh, so hope that uh, now that we're in the fall season, we're going to settle into some other things, new words for our worship, and of course, uh, at worship uh, Sunday morning, we are going to install the teachers, uh, our board members, our uh, PACE people, uh, so that uh, we can get going with school on Tuesday. Looking forward to it and uh, hope uh, everybody has a good return uh, to that schedule. <laughs> That's weird, of course, but uh, we're very glad. Yeah, something weird happened to me. I uh, didn't find exactly what I needed for our online service, and so I don't have the names of all the people that we're praying for, but you do. So uh, as I pause, just read those names to yourself, and I'll have an extra petition about school and other things. And so uh, let's uh, begin our worship uh, with our confession and forgiveness. And please read the bold words with me. <clears throat> We bless the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. And so we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our leader and Savior. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, we will live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. And so from Philippians, in the beginning and the end of the book, we greet each other with Paul's greeting. To all the saints in Christ Jesus, grace and peace are yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is with your spirit. And so please join me in prayer. O God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I have three readings today, because all three of them work together, though, you know, I comment a little bit more on the gospel this time, as I'm going to be doing. Some of Romans still, but then uh, a lot of good gospel stories in the next month. But here we start with a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord said to Ezekiel, so you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The first reading ends here. And so we uh, continue reading from Paul, and this is the 13th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, where he writes, Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. 
the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The reading ends here. And so this is the gospel, uh, holy gospel, as the word was given to Matthew in the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you've regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be, um, may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses listen, to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or, th or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And this is the good news of Christ's victory. And so our hymn of the day, um, you may have... Um, a different one in front of you, uh, I'm not sure, because things were a little bit weird this week. But uh, I chose, I'm choosing to sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee uh, for, for our song today, especially as we forgive brothers and sisters, as Jesus asks us to do. Well, he's talking about a member of the church. But here we go. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are Thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Now my sermon is, listen. How often have you heard this one? Pay attention! And how often have you had to say it? I'm thinking about the teachers that we're uh, going to install tomorrow and that are already out there working online and some classes and they're saying that. 
Do you think there's been a significant increase in attention deficit order, disorder, excuse me, since smartphones and PCs came around? Or did it start when TV pitched us ever shorter ads that had to grab us or else we'd never buy Frosted Flakes or rice a -roni? We've learned to like and need the latest shiny object, pet rocks or finger spinners, Walkmans and Fitbits. No, mine's a knockoff. Anyway, will we have a serious debate on policy this election season or, or just file away all the tweets, the memes, and the ads as more distractions and confusions so that we won't know what to think? If we think it's hard enough for students to study online, how good is our ability to concentrate? Yes, there is way too much to take in, but I hope that we're discovering just how important in the face of epidemic, disasters, civil war, just what is important in the face of pandemic, disaster, civil, and economic disorder. Doesn't the church have something to say about justice and mercy, healing for our bodies, our planet, our relationship as humans? So this one paragraph from the middle of Matthew's gospel is very important in how we may make it through such a time as this. Most of the time, you and I are dealing with individual conflicts that nag at us, or, or even bring about a lot of pain in our daily life. So this threefold way that Jesus talks about is, was uh, to try to find reconciliation is so very down-to-earth and practical and not all that hard to practice either. Oh, it's, it is hard <laughs> to get it started actually confronting someone with what has hurt you I even ran across online a, a life coach talk or paragraph offering a similar way to work through what we often want to avoid, making things right with others. So I'm not saying anything new or, or revolutionary. People in small groups uh, or as a caring body of Christ all together can serve to heal us, help us, you know, make us better. But there's something beyond not avoiding conflict or paying attention to a painful situation. It's when someone refuses to listen. This is about people living in our cones of comfort and conformity that will not let in opposing ideas or arguments. We refuse to listen while at the same time shooting arrows to try to burst our enemy's bubble. You've seen it. You are online or having an actual conversation when you offer an idea that you feel strongly about. If the other person doesn't attack you in that face-to-face -face setting, they will turn away, maybe at the first chance they get. And those of us on social media get tired of seeing the harsh comments on our own posting or get angry because those things that concern us will be quickly and decisively dismissed and ridiculed. The twin to refusing to listen is just not wanting to listen. It is one thing to be stubborn about not hearing someone out because I want what I want and you can't refuse me my opinion. I cancel you but I may not want to listen because then I don't have to change. Your idea, your thought may challenge me and this shield that I've built around myself. We don't like to be wrong and we fear change. One of my seminary professors has left some marks on my way of thinking and here's one. When you listen to someone else, it will move you from where you were to where you are after hearing them. 
If you haven't been moved, then you really haven't listened, haven't heard them. That doesn't mean that I won't move away from you, you know, someone does that to another person, because what you've said may be harmful, you know, it happens. But anything good that you and I have learned has always moved us along that path to being what God intends for us to be. We may think God does not move, but what centers God is love and mercy, which moves God toward us. So, when the offender will not listen even to the church, the body of Christ, Jesus tells us to, tells us to treat that one as a Gentile and a tax collector. As I've, always, as I've probably said each time we read this passage, you know Jesus went out of his way to treat tax collectors with respect. They're worthy enough to hear the good news, just as Gentiles were helped and healed by Jesus whenever they called out to him. Now, Paul had warned the Corinthians not to have anything to do with immoral people. That is, he said, those within the fellowship of believers. For we can't possibly avoid all who are immortal or greedy. But Jesus had other counsel, too, when we're confronted by evildoers. When they strike you on the cheek, turn the other. And it has happened before in our society, in our world, that one defiant act has shamed the wicked to stop. But I believe that we gather for this one reason, of many reasons that there are, while two or three can gather for worship, we also meet to figure out things. Again, there is need for believers to study scripture and the teaching, teachings of church leaders to pray about issues and questions and discern what God wants of us. What can we put our minds to asking the Spirit's guidance for these days? Taking care of our planet Wealth and poverty. How do we act toward other nations and other peoples? Obeying authority versus holding the powerful to account for their greed and corruption. Now, you know, Paul, of course, lists some nasty sins in his letters as he rattles off some of the commands, of course, but also the immorality of elite Roman, Roman feasting debauchery and all that. Now, it really wouldn't be hard to argue that we're having a fall of Rome moment in Western society with all the violence and hatred between red and blue partisans, the inequalities that are growing between factions of race, class, and gender. Yes, it's time to wake from sleep. But if it sounds like we always answer all these questions with love, well, I can't see that we're wrong. The one who loves another has fulfilled the law. After all, what did Jesus hold up as the command for us? Love God and love our neighbor. What would we ever, what should we ever say about God? God is love. Sadly, I think there are some who would refuse to listen when God tells them, I love you. There may be many reasons, few of which I'd think are good. If they don't know how to give love, they learn that from someone, for they have not known love from a neighbor or a parent. Or there is anger, hatred, and disdain that folks have learned from somewhere. Or people have been hurt and confused by the mistreatment of others against them. We may not see what is wrong in some of these people that we're dealing with, but we must 
Keep talking. Keep showing that there is love that we can rely on to bring us out of the darkness. Whether or not people will listen, we must constantly witness against sin and evil and stand for God's perfect justice, love, and mercy. Amen. So we turn to the Apostles' Creed, where together we can confess our baptismal faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, as we share our prayers, I'm sorry that I didn't write down the particular names that we have, but you can see them in, either in your bulletin or tomorrow, uh, later, later this week when they come out online as well. And so, drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community with Claim, with Gedco, ACTC, Loaves and Fishes, and Mana House. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what, we, you, what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, wildfires, or pollution. The Chesapeake Bay, the Gulf Coast, and throughout the American West. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. We lift up to you all of the Middle East, Sudan and Ethiopia and Belarus, among other places in the world. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially with those with coronavirus and their caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape all societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do lift up before you, too, Lord God, all those who are in the work of education, especially as we begin school at St. Peter's Elementary School and also all those places where online, hybrid, and in-person uh, schooling is, is starting. Please bless the teachers, help the students to be able to concentrate and uh, enjoy uh, that time, even though they can't always be with their friends. Please help us uh, to care for each other as we try to work on how best to keep our kids growing in their knowledge and their wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We do lift up before you, Lord God, all those who are sick, especially those who are named in our bulletin and, and who are, are in our hearts today. Please stay with uh, them and their loved ones uh, as we all turn to you for health and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith 
as you equipped them. Equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray in thanksgiving for our uh, continuing offering to the church. O God of justice and love, we give you thanks that you guide our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your resurrection feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. So Jesus said, ask and you will receive. And so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Live in peace. Remember the poor. We will learn God's truth. We will share the Spirit's healing. We will follow the way of Jesus. Amen. And so the peace of Christ is always with you. And also with you. We thank you for joining us again and hope that uh, as uh, we continue to share these services that you'll find uh, peace that when uh, we are ready to welcome more people back into the building, uh, as you feel more confident and as we're uh, given more signs that uh, things are a little bit better, we'll be glad to see you again. Uh, please, as you have a chance, uh, remember us with your continuing gifts and, and all the special things that uh, we try to do for our neighbors. Take care. Uh, have a, a blessed holiday. Uh, or just a fun holiday, what am I saying? And talk to you later. Bye-bye.